Good morning, everybody. It is your girl, Salandia Hammond, a.k.a. Sue Hemp, baby. And I am excited to be back with you guys for another Wednesday call. You know what it is, the empowerment, motivation, and business call that we try to do every Wednesday. (laughs) And I'm laughing because you guys know I was absent on last Wednesday. But I promise I have a good reason for it, and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. But for those people that are new to the call, let me just say we want to welcome you with open arms, and we are excited that you decided to take time to spend with us on this midweek Wednesday call, and we do not take it for granted. Uh, One of the reasons why I wanted to do this call was to motivate people during the middle of the week, because a lot of times we get to hump day and we want to, like, relax, or we're looking at Friday and it's still a few days off. And we can become a little uh, depressed or unmotivated. So I wanted to do a call to, to, to so to speak, uh, to kick you uh, in the rear end, so to speak. Uh, just joking, guys. But to get you up and to keep you motivated and to, you know, encourage you to finish the week strong. Because I don't want you to look at Monday as a dreadful day. I don't look at, want you to look at Friday as hallelujah, I made it. I think every day you should be excited because it's a new day, a new opportunity for you to seize, a new chance for you to live your dreams. So I wanted to do this call call, guys. And for those of you that are new to the call, again, welcome to the call. A little bit about myself. Uh, if you guys are listening in on the uh, before we actually started the recording, I was talking to Chris McNary. He was informing me that he was a sailor. And I was just saying, hey, I did about nine years in the Marine Corps. So guys, I'm a Marine veteran. I am also a published author a blogger, internet marketer, did a little radio and a little TV. And my, I think my biggest and most proudest achievement is the fact that I am a mother. And every day I'm striving to be a better mother and friend to people that I uh, come into contact with. So I am excited about life, and I think I have good reason to be, because at one point in time, guys, I was down and out. And I think we all have been there, been down and out. Just could not see your way out. You know, you're laying flat on your back. All you can do is look up, but you're just wondering, how do I get up there? How do I fly? How do I make it out? What do I do to get to the next round? Because they say every round goes higher and higher, but how do I get to the next round? And, guys, I was there not too long ago either. You know, there was a time when I was riding on cloud nine, had all the money I needed, um, had all the friends I needed, but um, just lacked vision, really, to be honest with you, lacked focus, lacked um, faith, to actually live out the dreams and the desires that were placed into me when I was created. So as a result, you know, I, like, went through my money like crazy. The housing market crashed, and I lost all my rental properties. And, guys, in 2009, I actually had to file bankruptcy. Didn't even know what bankruptcy was. You know, I thought that was something that, uh, you know, uh, billionaires uh, did, you know. Didn't even know what it was, but I had to file bankruptcy um, ended up losing all of my possessions. Actually, even the house that I was living in, guys, became foreclosed upon. But I am living proof that God can bless you to rise up out of the ashes just so long as you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can make some things happen. But I am also going to let you know that it does take more than faith, guys. You've got to put in consistent action. As I like to tell you guys, like Kumo D said, let's work. Let's work. You've got to consistently do it. You know, just as you when you go to a job, for those of you that are employed, if you're not there, you don't get paid, right? So same thing with life, same thing with your business. If you don't put in, you don't get out. You know what I'm saying? You put in so that you can get out. And today, which brings me to today's topic, guys, which is faith to succeed in business. Faith to succeed in business. And before I get into the topic, the reason why I was gone last week is because I was cruising the waters, uh, enjoying Jamaica and the Cayman Islands and hanging out in Miami, guys. And I say that because my faith is what got me there. Um, I've always wanted to go to Jamaica for years. Didn't know how I was going to get there, but I wanted to go. And uh, just last week, I was blessed with the opportunity to go. How was I blessed with that opportunity, guys? The faith, the fact that I believe that I could be there and actually making it, uh, putting things into action to make it happen. I was blessed by uh, Apostle Terry McLean, um, a client of mine that I have helped with marketing. And as a result, 
you know, she's turned around, and every time she does something, she brings me along as a speaker, and I'm blessed to be afforded to take these trips, uh, blessed to be afforded where the accommodations are taken care of, and I get to speak, and I get to see all these beautiful places and partake in all these beautiful things for the simple fact that, you know, the Napoleon Hill law, when you help others to be successful, you in turn help yourself to be successful, is actually in full effect when it applies to her, and I'm thankful for that. So I was able to enjoy myself in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands in Miami. So excuse my absence on last week. But that, that leads me into faith, guys. That leads me into faith. Faith in business. And I think more and more nowadays it's becoming even more prevalent. People are talking about it even more. You've got athletes talking about it. You've got CEOs talking about it. You've got people in your community talking about it. At one point in time, faith in God, you could not discuss that in the business world. And now you cannot turn on your television. You cannot turn on your radio. You cannot speak to somebody without them mentioning faith in God when it comes to business. Because, guys, here's the thing. You are going to need it to succeed. Now, you may ask, what is faith? Well, guys, the dictionary defines faith as a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. It says that faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Oh, that's deep. It says it's being sure of what you hope for. Now, what are you hoping for right now? What are you hoping for? Are you hoping to start your business? Are you hoping for better health? Are you hoping for a better marriage? Are you hoping to be a millionaire? Are you hoping to help schools? What what are you hoping for? Because you see, faith is being sure. Uh oh. Sure, not doubtful. Uh oh. Sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It also says that faith is a belief that's not based on proof. Oh, my goodness. Faith is a belief that's not based on proof. So basically, with faith, we are moving forward without sight. We're taking steps and believing that we're going to achieve the goal that we have set, the intention that we have set, not knowing how we're going to do it, not having the proof, but being certain that it is going to fall into place. Guys, that's faith. That is faith. Let me tell you, without faith, without a belief, No goal shall ever be accomplished. I don't care if you want to start a business. I don't care if you want to walk, if you can't walk. I don't care if you want to be healed. I don't care whatever it is, guys. Without faith, without belief, no goal will be accomplished. You see, faith is more powerful than money. Faith is more powerful than friends. Faith is more powerful than resources. And you're probably like, Sue, you're crazy. What are you talking about? Money rules the world. Guys, let me tell you that there are are thousands of millionaires that did not have money, that did not have the resources, that did not have friends, that did not have the knowledge or the wisdom. But guess what they did have? Faith. They had faith, and because of that faith, that faith was able to move mountains. You see, faith has been the cause of many miracles. Faith has been the cause of many healings. Faith has been the cause of prosperity, and it has made many a millionaires. So, guys, without faith in your business, without faith in your abilities, without faith in your dreams and desires, it's going to be hard to accomplish those goals. As a matter of fact, I submit to you that you won't even be able to accomplish those goals. Guys, a huge dream requires huge faith. A huge dream requires huge faith. And a lot of times because of that, people are afraid to dream big because their faith is not big. But here's the thing, guys. My thing is God would not give you the desires and the dreams to accomplish the things that you want if he didn't already equip you with what you needed. All you have to do is push the button and activate your faith. Activate the powers like, you know, powers activated, faith activated. Now I can go through this world and I can accomplish everything that I want to accomplish because I've activated the faith, I've activated the power within, and I'm moving, I'm taking action, I'm getting off the couch, and I'm making it happen. Faith 
is what you need if you want to succeed in this business world. Guys, and the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this, because on my plane ride, well, even on the cruise ship in Jamaica and and, 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 and Cayman Islands, and then on my plane ride back from Miami to South Carolina, I was reading this incredible book for the second time, uh, The Wealth Choice by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. And I was reading the book, the the chapter on faith, and it was just phenomenal because I came across Kathy Hughes. I don't know if you guys know her. But she's the owner of Radio One and TV One. And a lot of people think that Oprah Winfrey is the uh, first um, African-American female with a network. But there's Kathy Hughes. Kathy Hughes has been out there for years. I mean, with Radio One, uh, she's done phenomenal things. And she's been able to do it because of faith. She stepped out when banks told her no, when people wouldn't loan her the money, when her when, when she had a, a child, uh in, in her teens, when her marriage fell apart, she still had the faith and the tenacity and the drive and the persistence and the consistency to go out and follow those dreams. And, guys, today she's the owner of Radio 1, one of the hugest uh, black-owned radio uh, empires out there. You know, she, she employs Steve Harvey, okay? Come on, guys. And she owns TV One. She's catering to providing great TV for the African-American audience. I mean, yes, we have BET, and we thank Bob Johnson for that, for starting that, which, again, is someone else that started out with faith and, you know, became a billionaire. Faith equals billionaire. Faith plus work equals billionaire. I mean, and 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 reading the book, guys, on the way back, I mean, it just really jump-started me because it caused me to look back over my life and the things that I have been blessed to accomplish. I didn't have resources. I didn't have the friends. I didn't have the knowledge. But what I did have was an undeniable, unshakable faith. And, guys, it's one thing for others to believe in you, okay? It's a great thing because, like, I, I, I'm truly indebted to my best friend, um, Maurice Perkins, I mean, because he believes in me beyond belief. You know, it's crazy. He believes in me when I don't believe in myself. But and, and and it's a great thing. It's really really great. But guys, it's another thing when you believe in yourself. When you activate the faith. When you push the power button, and it's like all of a sudden you are charged. You feel like you can go forth and accomplish the mission. That's what faith does, guys. Let me tell you something. Huge dreams requires big faith. You cannot do it without it. And if you guys don't have that book by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, I'm encouraging you to get it. You know, I'm here to tell you that Puff Daddy, this dude is worth $700 million, guys. (laughs) Do you not think that he has faith in what he does? Puff Daddy, $700 million. When this, This dude last year was only worth, not only, because it's still a lot, $550 million. A five hundred million, and in the course of a year, he has increased his income by two hundred million dollars. That's faith plus work. That's making it happen. That's persistence plus consistency. Faith is knowing that God gave you desires and believing that He will will accomplish those desires. Believing that He gave you everything that's needed to accomplish those desires. Guys, I want to tell you about Stormy Wellington, and I had the 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 the, the blessing to interview Stormy Wellington. She had faith. She knew that she wanted to leave the life that she'd had, the life that she'd endured, which is a life of abuse, you know, the life of uh, growing up in a drug-infested world, the life of just letdowns. And so with faith, guys, and, and armed with $135 to her name, she relocated from Miami to Atlanta, Georgia, and within six months became a millionaire because she had the faith that something better was waiting for her. She had a yearning, a desire to accomplish her dreams, and she activated, she pushed the faith button, activated the powers, made a move, got off the couch, made a move, and boom, her efforts were rewarded. I want to tell you guys about Terry Clay, another lady I had the, the privilege to interview. You know, teenage mother, had kids, had four kids, I think, before the age of 21. You know, battered relationship, you know, pursuing a dream that her family wanted her pursue of nursing, but she never loved it. So on faith, she activated her faith, pushed the button, activated the powers within, and today she is an Internet marketer. She is living the dream of her life. She is a freedom entrepreneur. She's a motivational speaker. She's an author. But because she didn't allow the fact that she was a teenage mother, you know, under the age of 21 with four kids, she didn't allow that fact, that circumstance, 
circumstance to stop her. She activated her faith and believed that there was something better for her, and she took charge of her life. She was certain. She believed. She was sure. She was certain that there was something better for her. She went after it, and she grasped it. Guys, I want to tell you that faith is what led Dr. Evans. Dr. Evans, it led him from having a 10 church members in his home to having over 8,000 members in his church. Faith did that. You know, when, when Dr. Dennis Kimbrough interviewed him and asked him, he said, you know, what is the secret to your success? Dr. Evans responded, the secret and source of all wealth, success, and heroic achievement has, has and will forever be faith. He said the secret and source of all wealth, success, and heroic achievement has and forever will be faith, guys. Faith. Faith is what led Tyler Perry to perform his play one more time. He wanted to give up, guys, but something told him on the inside, no, you've got to do this. Have the faith. Do it one more time. And some of you are so close to success and you want to quit, and you've got that voice in you speaking, guys, telling you to do it one more time. Don't quit, guys. Don't be like the man who was three feet away from gold. He gave up. He quit, and he was only three feet away. Someone else came in, bought his land, dug. Dug, in, dug three feet away from where he stopped and became a multimillionaire because he hit the jackpot. He found the goal. Don't be that guy who stops three feet away from goal. Don't be that person. Faith is what led Tyler Perry to do his play one more time, guys. And as a result, he had sold out shows. And today, guys, I don't even need to tell you this story. You already know how it ends. All you need to know is that faith is the driving force. Faith is a measure of your inner belief. Faith is a measure of your inner belief. Faith is what led Terry McMillan to move to L.A. with only $300 in her purse in pursuit for her writing career. And today she is one of the most renowned authors out there. She's had movies, movies that sprung from her novels, from her fiction books. Terry McMillan, Faith. Faith, guys, in case you forgot, faith is being sure of what we hope for. What are you dreaming for? What are you dreaming for? Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So I am here to tell you that you not only need faith to succeed in life, you need faith to succeed in business. When those banks tell you, no, I am not going to loan you the money, You've got to have faith and keep moving anyway, trusting and believing that what you are hoping for is going to happen. When those creditors tell you your credit is shot, uh, there's no way we can help you. You've got to keep moving. So, you know, trusting and believing when you want to do that big show, when you want to film that big movie, when you want to start that daycare, when you want to build schools, when you want to feed the hungry, when you just want to better your life, better your community, or help your next-door neighbor, when you want to be healed, you have to trust and believe that your faith is what is going to carry you through. You know, guys, I want to read you one little thing from the book, The Wealth Choice by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, and then I'm going to open up this call because I feel like some of you guys have some faith stories that you can share, and you never know how your story can help someone. But I just want to read this to you, what Dr. Dennis Kimbrough says about faith. He says, faith binds the hopeful to their tasks until their deeds are accomplished. Do you guys get that? You see, faith keeps you doing what you what you love. Faith keeps you doing that thing. Even when your business is losing money, faith keeps you going in every day and putting the money that you are making back into your business because you believe you have the faith that one day you are going to emerge victorious, that one day you are going to become that multimillionaire. You see, that's what faith does. So faith binds the hopeful. It, it, it binds. It means that you are attached to it. You are you have to do it. Faith binds the hopeful to their tasks until their deeds are accomplished. Faith is that something within which does not guess but knows. It knows where it sees what we can only envision. Faith carries in its nature a power that controls and demands, a force that inspires audacity and heroic courage. Faith is the prophet within the divine messenger appointed to guide us through life at the very moment when we lose heart and waver. Faith sees resources, untapped powers, unlimited possibilities, and potential that doubt and fear conceal. Faith is assured and never afraid because it sees a way out and uncovers a solution to every problem. 
all that endures, everything that stands the test of time has been carved out of the bedrock of faith. There is no medicine like faith, no elixir, no no elixir so effective and no tonic so powerful than faith. Guys, no one can become prosperous while he or she expects to remain poor. You cannot, you cannot exceed the limits that you set for yourself. Before you can lift yourself, you must first lift your spirits. And spirit is just another word for faith. So, guys, if you want to succeed in business, you've got to have the faith and the belief that you can make it through. Uh, Such was the case. I'll give you one more example, and then I'm going to open up the call. You know, was the case with my sister, Shanika Hammond-Brown, a.k.a. SHB, and she told this story at the Bronner Brothers Hair Show in her class. You know, there was a year when her, her show was canceled. It was canceled because she didn't get the funding there in time. And she had already, you know, had everything in line. Vendors had bought their tickets to fly across the world, you know, to come to this show. And here it is, the convention center in South Carolina was saying, no, the show is not going to happen. Guys. Here I am, been working on this show for months with her, putting in so many hours. I was tired and everything. And then to get to that point, you got to believe that I was, like, stressed out. And I was like, you know what, SHB, let's just refund everybody the money and let's just, you know, let's just cut our losses and da 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 But, see, that wasn't my dream. It was SHB's dream, my sister. And she was like, no. She was like, no, I don't care what they say. I don't care what it looks like. This is my dream, and I have the faith that this show is going to go on. And, you know, I'm looking at her like she's crazy. Her husband looking at her like she's crazy. Maurice looking at her like she's crazy. But she had the faith, guys. You see, faith binds you to your tasks until it is accomplished. So she went down there and she spoke to those people at the convention center. And she told them what was going on. She told them what needed to happen. She told them this was her dream. She told them she was an honest woman. She told them that so many people were depending on this show. And, guys, (laughs) I don't know what to say, but a miracle happened. They changed their minds. They changed their minds, and it flipped. It was like they started working and 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 calling people and and trying to make things fall into place to make this show a success. When they were saying no, eventually, when they were just hard set against helping guys, it just flipped. Her faith went in there. She stood strong, and they were moving mountains to make this show happen. They were cutting corners, cutting prices, and guys, I'm here to tell you that the show went on. So I say this again, faith is more priceless. Faith is more important than friends, than family, than resources, than knowledge. Faith, guys, is priceless. But I will say this, faith without works is dead. So you got to get off the couch. You got to push the button, activate the faith and the powers within and then get about your business and make it happen. So at this time, guys, I'm going to open up the call. If you um, if you want to say something, if you got a, maybe you have a faith story that you want to share with somebody, how it has helped you with business, how you were able to accomplish something in business, or even in your personal life, you might want to share it with somebody. It could help uplift them. I am going to ask you to press star six if you will press star six. Press star six, you will be able to uh, speak. And I know everybody gets a little timid. We got a lot of people on this call. But everybody gets a little timid when I'm giving you the chance to speak. But if you want to speak, just press star six. Okay, caller last four of the of the call. If the number is five seven four four. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Rosalind Kulanda. How are you? I am good. How are you doing this morning? Doing fabulous. I good, met good. you sister's hair show in Florence, and I was dancing with you for a minute. <laughs> awesome. I love to dance. I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Woody's daughter. Okay, got you. Got you. Okay. Woody, sister Woody. Yeah, I'm out of Myrtle Beach, and um, I have a whole bunch of faith stories, but one particular one that stands out for me is um, uh, I had been employed at a plant, a local plant here, Mm-hmm. Um, for about six years, and uh, my goal and dream 
which has been part of my aspirations since a child, was to act and model. Mm-hmm. And um, I had, um, remember being in the job and started, you know, doing a little extra work and stuff, and I wanted to leave the job. What that happened here, this wasn't a good environment for me. It was time to move to another level, basically. Well, I remember um, taking some acting classes, and, you know, like I said, I had been doing a few movies already, and um, I had written down my goals and made them plain. Mm-hmm. I had got headshot done. Uh, and I remember saying, you know, words are powerful. You get what you picture, you know. Right. And I remember saying, I'm going to leave this job. I'm getting out of here. It is time to go. I re- I had, I didn't know how to write up a, a resignation letter, but I knew a friend that could. I called the, one of my good friends and asked her, I said, can you write up this letter for me? I want to leave my job. She's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. She's like, when? I said, I don't know, but I want to, I'm going to get it ready. I had to write the letter out, and I put the letter in the envelope in my glove compartment. And let me say, every day I was in that job and that plan, I would turn the corner. I would be like angry, like I got to get out of here. Wow. Let me see what happened. <laughs> Faith is, is powerful, but you got to go to work. Um, I wrote the letter. And then I remember my agent telling me one day, she said, whatever you do, just always, you know, look around, watch your surroundings, look in the papers, look in, you know, ads. Sometimes those things are really legit, you know. Mm-hmm. So one day I was looking in the paper and I found an ad for um, audition. I thought, wow, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about the company. It was out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was a little familiar with Charlotte because I was driving back and forth to go to a modeling school with John Casablanca at the time. So I, I said, well, hmm, let me see if I need to drive up there. Didn't need to drive. There was no address in there. There was an address, but not an actual um, phone number. Right. Said, well, let me just see if it's legit. I mean, you never know until you try. I did. I sent my headshot to this um, company, and I got a phone call within a few days. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and they asked me, uh, would I be available certain dates? They're coming to Myrtle Beach at the Palace Theater for um, – uh, to do audition, would I be available? I said, yes. See, I had already had a strategy, had already had a plan that I want to save my vacation date, mm-hmm. right, just in case. <laughs> well, they came to the Palace Theater, and I had to audition. And they said everybody that actually had whoever got the role, which was at the Palace at the time, was a show called Rags, Rags Kids Club Band. Um, it's a children's rock band. And um, they had the role of Garfield the Cat, you know, for when he came back in the movies. Mm-hmm. Well, I was auditioning for Garfield the Cat in the children's show. They called me in a few days. I remember being out with a cousin, and the phone call came in from the owner of the company, and she was like so ecstatic, and, oh, my God, I'm so excited. And, I, and you got the role. I mean, I'm sitting at the wheel, like, crying. <laughs> I landed the role as Garfield the Cat in the show. At the palace, now remember, I had already had a plan. I had my uh, vacation days saved just in case, you know, whatever happens, I, I can use them and still be at work, but um, use them for what was needed for, you know, to leave me if I had to go, you know, meet with them, you know, whatever. Right. And actually, out the Rockets were coming in from New York at the show. We had to share the stage, but I had a week's vacation left at this time. They called me back and was like, we're going to start this date. We got another phone call. Okay, we need to push it up because we need to share the stage with the Rockets. So rehearsal times kind of altered everything. Because I had a plan and I saved my vacation days, I was actually still working. And then they called me to come audition. So I was actually working, but I was actually at the palace getting paid for rehearsal time <laughs> because we had to rehearse ahead of time for the show. <laughs> so they thought I was on vacation. I was really getting another check. <laughs> well, that's had a pass. Got the, got the role. I was doing the show that whole summer. Uh, we started her- rehearsing in March. I got the role um, prior to that and rehearsed until September. Then I get another phone call. Once the show ran and granted, I had no clue after I left. I ended up leaving the job, too. I had no clue how I was going to make it after that. But let me tell you what happened. I went into that place. Hey, hey Rosalind. Yes. You, you're going to have to give it to me in 30 seconds because I got okay. a couple of other callers. Okay. Okay, so I went into the place, got the role, just say that role, after the show, I went on two USO tours all over Asia and all over Europe wow. because of fans. Wow. Man, that's what's up. That's ex- you know, that excites me because I'm into the theater, too. That And that is probably one of the hardest professions to get into, so that requires a whole lot of faith. <laughs> yes, yes. 
a whole lot of faith. Rosalind, we thank you so much for that. We're going to go to our next caller. Uh, we are going to last four or 5041. State your name and where you calling from. Hey, what's going on, Sue? This is Chris McNary. Hey, Chris. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, Sue. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, you pretty much already know my story, but let me share it amongst the others. Yeah, so uh, basically I've been laid off around about five times. You know, it's, it's about wow. crazy because basically I've just been overqualified. You know, you uh, you know, in my type of work, you know, if you, I guess if you have more credentials than others, they don't want to pay you uh, what you actually deserve. So uh, they say you're unqualified. So um, I ended up calling Sue, and I was just like, all right, I, I got to make this Internet thing work. I got to make this internet thing, internet thing work. And she was just saying, pray. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't pray. You don't need to pray. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I I'm not feeling highly educated. I, I don't need to pray. So uh, after that, I'm still, you know, broke and disgusted, <laughs> and I decided to like, okay, all right, yeah, let me let me pray and give this faith thing a work, you know, a world. And after that, I've been on a leaderboard uh, for two months um, in my uh, particular company. Um, you know, things have been going a lot better. I'm mean, getting a lot more engagement than most of the marketers I was actually following. Um, it's just been um, absolutely unequivocally outstanding. I mean, it, it's just been ridiculous, and it was just putting the faith, believing that I can actually do it. I mean, that that was the thing I was missing. You know, I was trying to find the secret sauce. I kept on talking to marketers, trying to <laughs> you're trying to see what they're doing, and that's what it was, just to have the faith that I can actually do it. Not exactly saying it, but having the faith. And then that's what's up. Uh... So. That, that, Man, I think that's I think you just summed up right there. <laughs> yeah, that that is awesome, Chris. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. You know, I think that uh, Chris and Rosalind really just put a great icing on the cake there. That's the thing. Everybody wants to. Um, be a part of something great. You know, they see people flashing on the Internet, you know, I'm making thousands of dollars, and, and they are, guys. It, it's true because I do. Uh, and Chris is on the leaderboard, and it's awesome. And uh, But a lot of times what people what – people forget to realize is that, guys, it doesn't matter who you follow. Like I told you earlier in the call, uh, it doesn't matter who believes in you. I mean, that's a great thing to have people believe in you. But, guys, it's another thing when you activate that belief in yourself, when you activate that faith, it takes you to a whole nother level. And as Chris just said, he was able to get on leaderboards. And all it took was him activating his faith and being consistent with uh, doing what he needs to do to make it happen. So, uh, I am here to tell you guys that faith is what's needed to succeed in business, and I'm I'm gearing this call towards business this morning. You guys know, always know I'm talking about life and your career and business, but faith, you use faith to succeed in any area of your life. It just so happens that particularly this morning we're talking about business. And we have a few more minutes. Normally this call is only like 15, 20 minutes, but we have a few more minutes. So if somebody else wants to chime in, just hit star six. I'm just going to ask you to keep it to a minute, minute and a half. So just hit star six if you want to chime in or if you have a question. And while we're doing that, I just want to invite you guys to come back out next Wednesday, the same time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Invite other people to come on the call. Um, And also at 10 a.m., my friend, my business partner, Terry Clay, has a call at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every day, Monday through Friday. So you guys can tune in to my Facebook page to get the information for her call. And if you are looking for free marketing advice, if you are looking for motivational information, or if you're looking to get a copy of this call, guys, tune in to my Facebook page, which is Sue Ham, S-U-E-H-A-M, or you can go to my personal page and friend me, Salondia Hammond, S-U-L-O-N-D-I-A Hammond. And then also, guys, get all that free information, free tutelage, free knowledge on my website at SueHam.com, S-U-E-H-A-M.com. So I'm going to ask one more time, anybody else want to chime in? All you got to do is hit star six, star six. You got about a minute to shine, a minute to shine. Star six if you want to chime in or if you got a question. I just want to say, guys, I know from experience that faith works, and Rosalind and Chris have said the same thing. So if you want to succeed, push that button, activate your faith, and let the power uh, let the power begin. Let it work and make it happen. Listen, like I said, faith without works is dead. You got to get off the couch and put something in it, okay? All the great people that I mentioned on this call today, it's because they actually did something. It's your life, guys. Do something with it. Make it count. Don't die with regrets. In closing, I got to tell you to live, love, learn, and laugh. Don't quit. 
follow your dreams to success. And remember, guys, I am Sue Hell Baby, and I am loving you to life.